All right, switching to silver in the Yukon. Um, pleasure to be here. This is our first time for Metallic Minerals to be uh, here at the London One to One Conference. Um, we are a uh, high-grade silver focused explorer in the Keno Hill Silver District next to Alexco. Uh, the company is just a year and a half old, so we're not that well known yet, but uh, we've accomplished an awful lot in just the past couple of years. Uh, basically, this is one of two founding companies for the metallic group of companies. Our focus is on brownfields opportunities where we see scale potential for world-class deposits with existing road and power infrastructure next to operating mines. So really reducing the profile. Metallic is silver focused in the Yukon and Group 10 is platinum focused next to the Stillwater mine in Montana. The team here at Metallic, uh, I'm one of the original co-founders at Nova Gold and many of the people are alumni from the early Nova Gold days. Uh, we are exploring for high grade silver in this fabulous Keno district which has produced over 200 million ounces historically and has 100 million ounces in resources under Alexco, our, our neighbor. Uh, we took the opportunity uh, during the bear market phase when uh, basically we could go in and accumulate a large land position in this district, it's 166 square kilometers. Uh, we aggregated 40 different land parcels that had been largely privately held or were relatively small uh, pieces in other public companies. We couldn't have done this at the top of the market, uh, so really taking advantage of that cycle. Um, very quickly compiling the information. We've got a great working relationship with Alexco. Alexco in part was a spin out out of Nova Gold, so I've known Clint and the team for several decades. Um, they've been great to work with. They've done tremendous work over the last 10 years understanding the controls to the geology. Uh, Simon and Seymour have really um, developed the science to understand where to look. When we take a look at the geology here, the western half of the district has produced 200 million ounces. 100 million ounces of new resources. The geology doesn't stop at the claim boundary. We've got the same rocks and structures that continue. Uh, the deepest mines in the district are 300 to 400 meters by comparison to Coeur d'Alene, which is a similar tile, style district. They're mining at three kilometers depth and they produce two billion ounces. So we see it, this as a district that truly has the potential to be a 600 million to a billion ounce district and is really just getting started. We very quickly have moved uh, the company um, from the really identifying target stage uh, to drill testing stage and, and a large part of the, the background of the team has allowed us to move very, very quickly. Just quickly a, a photo of the area for those who haven't been here, but this is rolling hills, highway access, grid power, and you've got a mill in the center of the district. So it's really a great place to be able to operate year round. Brownfields. That means we're drilling and exploring next to deposits that have been previously mined. In our case, they're mostly shallow open pits that were hand mined in the 20s and 30s. But it means that we can be drilling uh, right away on high grade uh, uh, resources uh, in terms of moving them forward. A quick map of the district to show you where we are. Um, the Keno district is here in the pretty center of the Yukon paved uh, highway and, and grid power to site and an existing port facility here at Skagway for year-round shipping of, of concentrates. That means the capex on these is very low and it means it results in very high IRRs. Uh, this is the mill in the complex. It's owned by our neighbor Alexco. Uh, it was built in 2010. They're in the process of restarting production. Uh, they're saying Q4 to early Q1. Uh, at 840 to 930 grams, this is top in class in terms of grade for the industry. Average grade is about 300 grams. At three and a half to four million ounces, that makes them the ninth largest primary silver producing mine in the world. So even though it's a small mill, uh, excellent production profile with the ability to expand, particularly if you can grow this resource base. Right now they're a bit shy on, on mine life, so that's where between their own exploration and our efforts in the district, we think we can grow this and turn this into really realizing the potential of the district. Um, reserve grade for the producing primary mines, you can see you've got a handful of low grade open pit things, you've got a big basket of average grade uh, resources uh, that are mostly underground, and then there's six mines that really stand out in silver. Um, you can see most of these are already owned by the likes of Hecla, Hofchilds, Pan America, et cetera. 
Kino is top in terms of silver grades, second highest when you include the lead and zinc. So it really stands out in terms of quality. This is a geologic map of the district. Original discovery here on the west at Silver King, at the summit area at the Kino Hill namesake, and then Cobalt Hill on the eastern end. Most of the exploration uh, has been here on the western end that was consolidated by Alexco's uh, predecessor. We've been basically building our land position on this less explored eastern and southern and east-western extensions to the main structures. The 12 main identified major producing structures in the district, 10 of these continue on to our ground. What does it take to find a deposit in Kino? You need to first be on one of the major productive structures. Secondly, you want to be in the brittle host rocks, either the Kino Hill Quartzite in this kind of light purple, or in the greenstones. You can see the systematic spacing of the main structures, and you can see kind of pearls on a string in terms of these past producers. The past resources are the orange color, a little hard to see on the screen. The yellows are the current resources and reserves for Alexco. The red circles are the eight past producing mines that are on our ground. And this area out to the east, we've got um, many prospects that have ore grade minerals right at surface, but has uh, as of yet not been tested. Uh, so taking a look at the, the main uh, structures and the most productive, the Birmingham trend where most of the work, 140 million ounces. The ELSA trend where we own the Silver King on one end and the Formo on the other. Uh, effectively one of the, the next most explored with excellent potential. Uh, the Flame and Moth, another new discovery uh, that projects into the, the summit area as well as the Bell Kino. So these areas we believe have excellent discovery potential. So we very quickly have gone from concept to acquisition mode to advancing, uh, looking at as many as 40 different targets down to kind of a 10 priority targets, of which we saw the potential last year in 2017 to drill two of them, our caribou and home stake prospects. We had high grade trenches at surface, a little bit of shallow drilling, and by shallow I mean 50 meters from surface. We came in and drilled 14 holes under those, and we've now got ore shoots that we're chasing this year with three targets at this resource delineation stage. Very high grades, typical of Kino, 1,000 gram per ton uh, type silver grades. We've got six targets that we did the follow-up work in 2017 where we went in with high grade soils, mapping geophysics to identify uh, mineralization at surface. This will be the first time we're able to test those. So we're looking to drill up to six of these targets this year that we hope to be able to advance to a resource delineation stage. And then lastly, uh, we've got a, a pipeline of about 20 uh, additional targets, either these are soils or prospect pits or even trenches in some cases, where we've got grade at surface that tells us the structure is coming through, or in the quartzites or the grain stones. So we look to do the work this year to prove those ups and move those to potential drill targets uh, for, for next year. Because the infrastructure is in place in the district with a great relationship with Alexco, we've really got a number of opportunities as we start to make discoveries and advance things to resources for how best to take them to the next step. Our plan is to remain focused on discovery and exploration. If we find something large enough, you could look at a standalone, you could look at partnering with a bigger player. Even a four to five million ounce discovery here could be significant for Alexco, uh, our partner is incremental ore. So it gives us a, a pathway to production, whether we find another world-class deposit uh, like Birmingham, or whether we find something high grade and attractive right at surface uh, that could be incremental ore for, for our next door neighbor. Uh, Metallic's been, um, has held up well in the market. Uh, the green line is us, the blue is the silver ETF, the yellow is the GDXJ. Um, we're just getting started, there's not a lot of visibility on this uh, name yet. Um, with 56 million shares out, management owns 25%. OTP fund in Eastern Europe owns about 5%, and then the number of high net worth individuals hold the remainder. So it's early days for us in terms of getting out and telling the story, but we think this is a discovery story. We would believe with the success of our neighbor at Alexco next door, turning production back on late this year, early next, that we've got a great platform to build on and to really demonstrate the potential for this district to become world class. Well, thank you very much.